You're on. Hi everyone. I am here with your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. So today is January 21st. We are almost at the end of this month. Can you believe it? My mom's birthday is January 30th. She'll be 60 this year, which means this year I will be 40. She's 20 years older than I am, so it's easy to keep track for both of us. It's hard to believe we're both going to be that old. Time sure does fly. Doesn't seem like that when you're a kid, but once you get older it seems to go faster and faster, I've noticed. The days just seem to fly by when you're older. You do. They really do. They really, really do. The months, the days, the years. When your mom's gone. Yeah, and then your loved ones are gone before you know it. That's the truth. Enjoy each other while you have each other. Try not to fight with one another. Because you don't know how long you have each other. And spread Jesus' love and the word of Jesus wherever you can especially to your loved ones because you want them going to heaven so you will see them again and be with them again okay we'll be reading in the New International Version and here is what we'll be reading today we'll be reading Matthew chapter 13 verse 47 reading through chapter 14 verse 12 Psalm 18 verse 16 through 36 and Proverbs chapter 4, verses 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, Jesus has some more parables for us today. And then we're going to be talking about John the Baptist getting beheaded. By the coward Herod. Herod that fox. He was afraid of John because he considered John a prophet, but he gave his word to someone, so he had to do it, or he would have looked like a liar in front of people. So he had to have John beheaded, but he was afraid. <clears throat> his wife was the troublemaker, which was actually his brother's wife, and then he took her as his wife. She didn't like John the Baptist, hated him, because he told Herod and that it wasn't lawful for him to take his brother's wife, and it made her mad. She didn't want to hear that. She hated John for it. Okay, anyways, we'll get to that part. Let's go ahead and start, and we are going to start off with the words of Jesus. So these are Jesus' words, the parable of the net. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age, at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace, into hell. The bad people, the angels will throw into hell where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. And they replied, yes, they replied. He said to them, and then these are Jesus' words again, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. And now we're going to stop with Jesus' words for a minute to read this little paragraph. When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue. 
Nobody wants to listen to him there. They think he's a nobody there. When you go to your hometown, you know how that is. And they were amazed. Where did this man get these get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, and these are Jesus' words, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. And that was Jesus' words, the last line, and we're stopping, well, we're, we were ending in there, um, up above was Jesus' last words. And now we're stopping, and we're going to read about John the Baptist being head, beheaded. At that time, Herod, the Tetrarch, heard the reports about Jesus, and he said to his attendants, This is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. That is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John. But he was afraid of the people because they considered John a prophet, and Herod was afraid too. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias, which would have been his niece, by the way, danced for the guest and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath in front of everybody, with an oath to give her whatever she asked, even to half his kingdom, by the way. Promoted, prompted by her mother, she said, Give me, here, on a platter, the head of John the Baptist. That's what her mother told her to ask Herod for. The head of John the Baptist, on a platter. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request be granted, and had John beheaded in the prison, Ugh. Can you imagine? She had to be a really sick woman to want this and to have her daughter carry that platter to her with somebody's head on it. What a sick, evil woman. His head was brought. He ordered that her request be granted and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. How could they not have nightmares? How could they live with themselves and be okay with this? John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Did they think they got the head too or just the body? You think she gave up his head or you think she kept it in some sick ritual way to have something to do with it? Then they went and told Jesus. You, I wonder if she kept his head just so they couldn't have his head to bury too. And she done something with it just so they couldn't have it it makes me wonder if she kept his head or gave it to him she's one sick evil woman we know she's in hell for sure she's in hell we know that for a fact she was an adulterer for one and having John the Baptist beheaded for another, she's definitely in hell. Herodias. All right, so let's stop there with Matthew today. So we're continuing on with Psalm 18 today, verses 16 through 36. All right, so let's get started. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. 
He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They comforted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanliness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I am not guilty of turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him. I have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands in his sight. To the faithful you show yourself faithful. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the pure you show yourself pure. But to the devious you show yourself shrewd. You, show, you save the humble. You bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? All who is the rock, and he is who is the rock except our Lord. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. Amen. And that's where we're stopping with Psalm 18. That was verses 16 through 36 of Psalm 18. And now we're going to read Proverbs chapter 4, verses 7, 8, 9, and 10. Still talking about wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Cherish her, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head, and present you with a glorious crown. Listen, my son, accept what I say and the years of your life will be many. Amen. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Okay, let me open our question. Our question for um, yesterday was, who were the parents of John the Baptist? Our reading went pretty good with that today, didn't it? Talking about John the Baptist. And the... I wanted the mom and dad, and the answers you should have came up with were Zachariah and Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was Mary's sister, by the way, her older sister. So that's the answer you should have came up with, and we already asked that one. All right, this one will take you back to the Old Testament. This is back when Jesus was just a baby. Pro prefer, I believe, eight years old when he was about to be circumcised and, you know, recognized, presented at the temple. Who recognized Jesus as the Messiah? When he was presented at the temple as a baby. When he was pr brought to the temple to be presented. I believe when he was eight days old.
who recognized him as the Messiah. And then uh, they said they could die now. They told the Lord they were ready to die because they were not going to die until they seen the Messiah. And when they saw baby Jesus, they said they could die now because they knew they had seen the Lord. Who was that? It was an elderly, elderly man. That's your question for tonight. And you can find that in the Old Testament. Okay, guys, let me read our prayer requests. Please keep the following people in prayer. Lonnie Doles Jr. and family, Jimmy Myers, Sherman Crabtree, Abby Myers and Rhonda Karshner, Layla and her son Emil, Michelle Watkins, Judy Thompson, Cindy and Jim Welsh, Dora Carper, Garnet Boyer and Jim Mitchell, Melody Stanley, April and Linda Thacker, Barb Post, Randy Post, Sammy and Paco. Okay guys, that was everything for today. Well, that's what I was going to say. Layla, um, we just checked the mail for today and we didn't get anything today. I just wanted to let you know, no package today. Um, all we got today was bills. Nothing fun today. <laughs> just bills. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> just bills again today. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.